Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again. Today we'll be discussing the early criminal history of Mike Acha Eisen, Richard Richie Ruiz, and Rudy Cheyenne Cadena, specifically focusing on the crimes that resulted in their incarceration in the California Department of Corrections. But before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Michael Cordero Eisen was born on November the 23rd, 1939, to parents Tony and Nellie Eisen, and grew up running around the San Francisco Mission District. Acha's father, Tony Eisen, was of Filipino heritage, and his mother, Nellie Eisen, was of Mexican descent. Acha had five siblings, two brothers and three sisters. Although not one of the original founders of the Mexican Mafia at DVI, Acha was one of the earliest members. He helped introduce the image to CDC and establish its dominance in the prison system through violence and intimidation. Acha and his older brother Ricardo had a history of criminal behavior, but Ricardo was luckier than Acha. Up until 1958, police had arrested Ricardo on suspicion of burglary, mail theft, and petty theft, but he was never convicted. Acha, on the other hand, was committed to the California Youth Authority in 1956 for car theft and escape from the Youth Guidance Center. He served 26 months until he paroled in the summer of 1958 from the Preston School for Boys. On December the 22nd, 1958, Acha, his brother Ricardo, and a friend, David Ortiz, were arrested on suspicion of attempted murder for the vicious beating of San Francisco barber L.B. Lawson. Lawson was outside his barber shop when Acha, Ricardo, David, and another unidentified youth pulled up in a vehicle. Ricardo said, that's the man, pointing to Lawson. Acha disagreed. Ricardo then said, let's get him anyways. Lawson was whipped with a chain, clubbed with a baseball bat several times, and fell to the ground. He managed to call out for help, and the attackers fled for their car. A brief time later, police officer Wendell Tyree apprehended them. Ricardo told investigators that he had never seen the barber before in his life, insisting that the barber made a mistake, and he had them all wrong. David told the press the cops gave them a bum deal. The court reduced the charges from attempted murder to misdemeanor assault, and the youngsters were sentenced to 90 days in jail. While at the Potrero police station, Acha ripped up the floorboards in the holding cell and smashed them in half. Authorities subsequently charged Acha with destroying jail property, and he received an additional 90-day sentence on top of his original sentence for the assault on the barber. Acha eluded the California Department of Corrections for now, but his time would come. Richie was born Ricardo Ruiz on February the 9th, 1943, in Douglas, Arizona, and was known as Richie from Bakers in the prison gang underworld. William Hankins, the first CDC institutional gang investigator, knew Richie well. Hankins met him in 1962 when Richie arrived at San Quentin. Hankins also debriefed Richie when he decided to defect from the Mexican Mafia. Hankins dedicated two chapters to Richie in his autobiography, Alpha Guard. He stated that Richie's criminal career began at the young age of 10 years old. Older criminals utilized Richie for running drugs and collecting debts. As the older criminals observed that Richie was reliable, his standing in the local underworld roles allowed him to start his own small criminal gang. He would find it much easier getting into prison than getting out of prison. Richie was first committed to the California Youth Authority for car theft at the young age of 13 in April of 1956. Once incarcerated, Richie did not seek to change his ways, but instead continued his criminal behavior and rebelled against authority every chance he got. As Richie grew more and more incorrigible, his status in the underworld grew as well. After serving 10 months, Richie, now 14 years old, was paroled back to Bakersfield in February of 1957. However, his freedom was not meant to last. In February of 1958, authorities charged Richie, now 15, with robbery, grand theft auto, and escape. Richie's parole was revoked, and he was returned to CYA's custody. This was no big thing to Richie. He challenged every institution he was housed in, bragging that they couldn't handle him. Richie's stated goal, which he shared freely with others, was to make it to the big time and reach San Quentin. Richie was one of the founding members of the Mariposa, a.k.a. Mexican Mafia, and this may have been the stretch in which he was recruited into the organization. Again, after serving 10 months, a 16-year-old Richie was paroled back to Bakersfield in February of 1959. 
Rodolfo Cheyenne Cadena was born April the 15th, 1943, in Bexar County, Texas, to parents Daniel and Anita Cadena. By 1950, the family had moved to Bakersfield, California. In 1958, 15-year-old Cheyenne was a freshman at East Bakersfield High School. His future crime partner and homeboy, Richie Ruiz, was not in school at the time. He was serving his latest term in the California Youth Authority, establishing the Mexican Mafia at the Dual Vocational Institution in Tracy, California. Richie paroled in February of 1959 and was reunited with Cheyenne. On Saturday, October the 31st, 1959, Cheyenne, age 16, Richie, age 16, Francisco Gomez Sanchez, age 16, and Preciolano Aguilar Hernandez, age 18, all from Bakersfield, attended a Halloween dance at a Bakersfield dance hall located at 815 East 18th Street. Shortly after midnight, Cheyenne and his group left the dance hall and crossed paths in a parking lot located at 800 East 18th Street with Robert Ornelas, age 22, Ismael Smiley Ornelas, age 20, and Avelino Aguilar, age 22, all from Button Willow. Robert Ornelas asked Cheyenne the whereabouts of a mutual acquaintance, Sal Luna. This started an exchange back and forth that culminated in a fight, resulting in the fatal stabbing of Aguilar. On Sunday, November the 1st, 1959, at 1.15 a.m., the Ornelas brothers rushed Aguilar to Kern General Hospital, left him in a corridor outside the emergency room, and then departed. But it was of no use. Aguilar had already bled to death. Alert nurses saw the men and took down the license plate and provided it to the police. At 2.33 a.m., police found the Ornelas brothers and the blood-splattered car outside a cafe at Rosedale Highway. The men were interrogated and admitted to participating in the fight and provided the details of the murder to the police. Police arrested Presiliano Aguilar Hernandez first at 3.30 p.m. at his home. At 6.30 p.m., police arrested Cheyenne and Richie together at Cheyenne's residence located at 1020 East 18th Street. The last suspect police arrested was Francisco Gomez Sanchez. Police placed him into custody at 9.05 p.m. at his house. They were all booked into the Kern County Jail on suspicion of murder. Everyone admitted to participating in the fight, but no one admitted to wielding the knife that murdered Aguilar. Investigators became aware that a hunting knife was missing for a little over a week from the home of Cheyenne's brother-in-law. They began a search for this knife, proceeding under the theory that the missing knife was the murder weapon. On November the 5th, 1959, working on a tip, Police Detective Henry Lostenau and Sheriff Sergeant David Fuller found the 5-inch hunting knife suspected to be the murder weapon when they raked a southeast Bakersfield Canal. The discovery focused law enforcement's attention on Cheyenne as the murder suspect. On the same day the murder weapon was found, Detective Lostenau and Lieutenant Richard Mason, armed with the newly found evidence, interrogated Cheyenne at the police headquarters late into the night until he finally admitted to stabbing Aguilar. Cheyenne told investigators that he thought he was stabbing Robert Ornelas, who sparked the incident when he asked Cheyenne the whereabouts of a mutual acquaintance. Cheyenne said he stabbed Aguilar once in the chest, but he didn't go down, so he stabbed him again. Police quoted Cheyenne as stating, I got carried away, stabbed him too many times. He demonstrated for investigators how he grabbed Aguilar by the arm after stabbing him once in the chest and spun him around then proceeded to stab him repeatedly in the back. The Kern County Coroner held an inquest on November the 9th, 1959. A coroner's inquest is an investigation into a death which appears to be due to unknown, violent, or unnatural causes. The purpose of the inquest is to determine who the deceased was and where, when, and how they died. Such an inquest was held to investigate the death of Aguilar. The Ornelas brothers testified during the inquest and provided details of the murder. The coroner revealed that Aguilar suffered 25 stab wounds, six of which were sufficient to cause death. A preliminary hearing in municipal court was held November 11, 1959. Cheyenne entered a guilty plea to one charge of second-degree murder and the municipal judge certified him to superior court for sentencing. The murder charges were dropped against Cheyenne's crime partners, and they in turn pled to lesser charges. Richie pled to one felony charge of using brass knuckles during the fatal brawl and was also certified to superior court for sentencing. 
The murder charges against Sanchez and Hernandez were dropped because there was no evidence that either of them utilized a weapon during the fight. They entered a guilty plea to one misdemeanor battery charge and a probationary hearing was set for December the 14th, 1959. Sanchez was sentenced to spend four months in county jail and two years on probation, and Hernandez was sentenced to a three-month sentence and three years on probation. On November the 25th, 1959, both Cheyenne and Ritchie were arraigned in Superior Court on charges of second-degree murder and possession of metal knuckles. The judge set sentencing for December the 16th, 1959. On December the 16th, 1959, Cheyenne was sentenced to serve a prison term of five years to life for the murder of Aguilar and was sent to Chino Prison. The California Department of Corrections received Cheyenne on December the 22nd, 1959. Richie was sentenced to serve a state prison sentence of six months to five years for the brass knuckle conviction. CDC also received Richie on December the 22nd, 1959. Neither would see the outside in over a decade. Now that we are familiar with the commitment offense for Cheyenne and Richie, let us turn back to Acha. When we last left Acha, he was sentenced to 180 days in county jail for assaulting a barber and destroying jail property. But how did he make his entry into the California Department of Corrections? On February the 25th, 1961, Acha was arrested for suspicion of robbery and assault with the intent to commit murder. Police accused him and his crime partner, George M. Babs, of hiring the taxi cab of Eddie Morrell in the Mission District and shooting and robbing him of $30. Authorities arrested Acha 24 hours after they picked up Babs just four blocks from the scene of the crime. Investigators found a newspaper clipping reporting on the crime in Nacha's bedroom. He would be convicted of assault and robbery and sentenced to the California Department of Corrections. Acha began serving his term at San Quentin and would announce his deadly presence soon after arriving. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please stay tuned for our next video. But for now, good night and God bless.